Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can create this animation in Blender by using Cloud Physics and Geometry Nodes. If you're interested, you can get the file for a dollar via the link in the description. Now let's get started. First, let's delete everything and add a cylinder. Scale it on the Z by 5 and move it up like this. Go into Edit Node and delete the top face and the face on the bottom. Delete and faces. Now go into Front View, Control R and add a few loop cuts. Like this. The faces should be roughly the same size on every side. Now press Z and go to wireframe, press 1 and select the bottom here. Go to the vertex properties and under vertex groups press plus and then click on assign. Now let's go back to object mode and hit delete on the numpad to see the entire cylinder. And now let's go here to the physics properties and select cloth. Enable self collision. Check that. And now let's press play. And as you can see, this is what happens. We also need to type in vertex and under shape, pin group, select group and now before you press play again I recommend that you save. I'm going to call it tutorial and save it. Now if you press play this is going to happen. Now let's add a force field wind and set it to something around 100 I think should work. We need to set it higher. Let's leave it at, at this at 1000 and now let's add a vortex. Set that to 10. Now let's go back to frame 1 and select the cylinder again and go into edit mode. Press A to select everything and go into top view, duplicate it and press Ctrl and move it here. Press A again, duplicate it and move it over here. Now press, press Shift D again and rotate it like this and move it here like this. Now select these and press Shift D again and move them down here. Now let's save again and as you can see it's quite laggy now so I'm going to bake it now. Go to Cache and press Bake. This could take a few minutes so I'm going to skip it. Once it's baked it's going to look something like this which is exactly what I want. Now let's hit Shift A and add a plane. And for the cylinder, let's hide that in the render. If you don't see this option right here, you can just go up here and enable it. So now let's select the plane again, go to geometry nodes and press new. Now let's delete the group input and drag the cylinder in here. Connect it to the geometry. Now let's hide the cylinder and here click on relative. Now let's add a mesh to curve. And put that here. Now we need a curve to mesh. Put that here. And now we need Extrude Mesh. Set the offset scale to 0 0.01 
and set it to vertices. Duplicate it and put it here and set that to edges. Now let's add a set material node. Duplicate that because we are going to need it later. Now add a joint geometry node and plug the set material in here. Now let's add a cube and connect that to the. Oh no, we need an instance and points node. Connect the instances to the geometry and now connect the cube to the instance. Now let's add a transform node and set the set here to 0 0.0055 oh. like this and here set the size to 0 0.01 now let's connect the geometry to the points and as you can see we now have these cubes and I think we need to change the set a little so that they are they are right in the middle of this cross here to make that a bit easier let's go back to frame one and now let's position them properly I'm going to skip that and then going to tell you what numbers I use. So these are the values that I used. For the x I used 0 0.003, for the y minus 0 0.003, and for the z 0 0.0005. Now let's scale the cubes up a little more so that they cover these things here. Like this for example. And now let's create the materials. Let's go to the materials properties and press new. Call this cubes. And create another one and call that cylinder. Now let's go to shading. Oh no, first we need to set them here. So for this one set it to cubes and this one set it to cylinder. So now let's go to shading and I'm going to create the one for the cubes first. Delete the principal BSDF and add an emission shader. Set the strength to 10 and connect it to the surface. I'm going to choose a blue color now let's go to rendered view and on the world properties set the color to sky texture and the air, dust and ozone set it to 5. Now let's create the material for the cylinders. Delete the principal BSDF again and if you have the node ring on installed which comes with Blender by default you can select the material output and press Ctrl T delete the image texture and connect it to the surface. Select the generated and put it into the vector. Add a color ramp and bring those closer together. Oops. Uh, for the white I'm going to choose something bluish and for the black I'm going to choose red. Now let's add a glass BSDF and plug it in between the color ramp and the material output. Now let's add a cube and scale it by 100. Now let's create a new material, delete the principled BSDF and add a principled volume shader. Set the density to 0.1 and plug the volume into the volume. For some reason, if we don't move the viewport, the volume won't be displayed. But now it will be. Now let's go to layout mode and hide the cube for now. Press play to 
go a little bit into the animation and now let's add the camera shift a camera and I'm going to position it somewhere around here Control alt 0 to go into camera view G set set to move it like this and now let's bring back the cube and go into rendered view now let's add a spotlight set the power to 100,000 and I'm going to choose a blue color for this and rotate it in the, on the Y by 180 degrees go to camera view and for the spot size I'm going to set it to this and now the radius I'm going to set to 15 meters now let's I'm going to set the radius to 15 and now let's add an empty plain axis and I think I'm going to move the camera a little closer and more up like this and now let's select the empty go here and hide the cube again select the empty and G shift Z move it somewhere around here and now move it up here we are going to use the empty as the focus point for the camera now let's go here to the preview and select the camera check depth of field and select the empty so let's try one and I think we can see this better in rendered view bring back the cube turn the overlays off and I think this looks good for the render settings I'm going to set it to 128 times 2 you can of course choose any value that you like but I'm going to choose that and check the noise if you have an NVIDIA card you can use optics which I prefer over open image denoise because it just looks better in my opinion now for the compositing I have this simple setup here you need to check use nodes and to get this noisy image and normal and the libido you need to check the noising data and then simply add an, a denoise node and set it to accurate now let's make sure that transparent is enabled here under film check transparent now I'm going to render this into JPEGs which means that it won't actually be transparent just that the black, the background will be black if you want it to be actually transparent you need to choose PNG and set it to RGBA the reason I'm using JPEG is that the file size is smaller now let's set an output folder I already created a folder for that and I'm going to call it cylinder geometry nodes and if you put an underscore after the name Blender is going to automatically assign numbers to the frames this is going to be useful if we compile them into separate now let's set an output folder and I already created one for that I'm going to call it cylinder geometry nodes
And if you put an underscore after the name, Blender is going to automatically assign numbers to the frames. That is going to be useful when compiling the images into a video. I'm going to show you how to do that after we rendered all the images. Now let's hit accept and save again. And now render, render animation. After it has finished rendering, let's close this window and go up here to the plus sign. Go to video editing, video editing. Make sure you are on frame one. Hover over here and copy, I mean, control C to copy the file location and shift A, image sequence. Paste this in here and remove the name. Now press A, enter. And under file format, go to FFmpeg video, encoding, set that to MPEG4 and output quality to high quality. And now let's hit render, render animation. And as you can see, now it is compiling the separate images into one video. So that's it with the tutorial. I hope you liked it. If you did, please press like. If you didn't, press dislike. And I'll see you next time.